Hi, this is Mark Brown with Game Makers Toolkit, a series on video game design. If you ask me, Rocksteady's Batman games are a good example of why bigger isn't always better. The first game in the trilogy, Arkham Asylum, was a pleasant surprise. Not only was it a great game and a great licensed game, but it was a killer Batman game. The developer figured out what made this dude interesting, how he was more than just a rich guy who punches hooligans while his underpants are showing. For starters, Arkham Asylum had truly loony villains who got inside the Dark Knight's head. And it also had free-flowing combat that mimics the martial arts of the animated films, and when Batman fought goons with guns, he'd hide in the shadows and use fear to trip up his opponents. Like a reverse horror game, as if you're playing as the Xenomorph in Alien Isolation. Those two main mechanics simply didn't require the massive open city that had, at the time, become synonymous with superhero games. Nowadays, they're all endless runners for iPhone. So instead, we got the smaller, more intimate environment of the Arkham Asylum Mental Hospital. But then we got sequels, and things inevitably got bigger. Arkham City gave us a few urban blocks and switched the structure from Metroidvania to full open world, and in Arkham Knight we get a mini Grand Theft Auto. But does Batman really benefit from the extra square footage? I'm not convinced. For one, the main gameplay systems in Asylum didn't actually gain anything from going open world. In fact, they kind of suffered. The Predator mode got lots of new gadgets and wrinkles in the sequels, but it always worked best in the purpose-built rooms of Asylum that encouraged you to play smart to isolate your foes, rather than the random rooftops of City and Night. And the combat got plenty of new features, but it quickly becomes tiresome when you have to fight dozens of random goons who are littered about the open world. Sandbox games should ideally contain mechanics that need a sandbox, like attacking bases in any way you wish in Far Cry, or the elaborate cop chases in Grand Theft Auto. Otherwise, you've just built an incredibly elaborate menu system to jump between gameplay moments. To its credit, Rocksteady did add more mechanics that made better use of the larger play space. But was anyone really asking for Batmobile tank warfare, or Assassin's Creed style tailing missions, or that old favourite, liberating towers? One of the biggest victims of an open world is story. A strong narrative can quickly lose its structure and focus when players are given so many distractions. In Arkham Knight, the urgency of stopping Scarecrow is undermined by the huge wheel of side missions, which see you stopping bank robberies and blowing up gun caches and training Asriel and tracking down a man-bat. Look, I know you're busy, but anything you can do to help is going to save lives. In a way, it emulates the feeling of Batman being overstretched and having to put out fires, sometimes literally. But the simulation is revealed as being quite hollow when you realise that there's no need to prioritise missions or act quickly. Take two events that happen early in Arkham Knight. Two of Batman's allies are kidnapped almost simultaneously, but unlike in The Dark Knight where Batman has to make a choice of who lives and who dies, there are no such stakes here. The Riddler will patiently wait for you to come back to his bonkers underground raceways, and all his posturing about killing his detainee are hot air. Take your time, detective. It's just a side quest. Open worlds can harm the pacing of gameplay, too. Ultra-linear games like Uncharted 2 can smartly dole out moments of shooting and climbing and story and puzzle solving at just the right time to stop you getting bored and to ramp up challenge and slowly teach you mechanics. Sandbox games aren't so good at this and you can find yourself doing repetitive tasks or facing a weird wobbly difficulty curve. I can see the case for open world games, of course. Players get more freedom, they can tackle missions in any order they want, and they get a lot more content for their cash. And games like Fallout and Skyrim make terrific use of massive great worlds to faff about in. But these days, I'm finding the promises of bigger and wider worlds a bit of a turn-off. Just Cause 3 is a huge open world game with over 400 square miles of complete freedom. You either end up with Assassin's Creed, which has so much stuff to do that your map looks like someone spilled a tub of glitter on it, or Codemasters Fuel, which holds a Guinness World Record for largest game world, but hasn't got a single interesting thing in it. So maybe Arkham Asylum proves that open world doesn't necessarily need to mean open world, and that game environments should be measured by how much meaningful content is inside, rather than in square meters. Arkham Asylum was tiny, but it had better pacing than Arkham Knight and a more focused story than Arkham City. It was claustrophobic, but the game's mechanics suited that. Spider-Man needs a big open world to swing about in, but Batman is at his best when he's locked in with his opponents. 
So for every monstrously massive open world, we need a few sandbox games that are tiny and intimate. More games like Resident Evil with its cramped Spencer Mansion or Gone Home with its Portland townhouse. Game worlds that are packed with details but free from padding. Worlds where you learn all the nooks and crannies and shortcuts as you retread familiar ground instead of whizzing past it all in a sports car. Game worlds that are memorable, not just cold, dull environments filled with content and features. Because, as Arkham Trilogy director Sefton Hill said back at the release of Arkham Asylum, it's easy to see how people fall into the trap of having so many features. It's natural to equate features with quality. This has got to be number one for me, followed by Asylum, uh, purely because of, of the, the amount of content there is. You want to do less, but do it amazingly well, rather than do more and have a load of average stuff. There are too many games out there that deliver lots of average content. Thanks for watching. Agree or disagree with my take on the Arkham Trilogy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Plus, please give the episode a like, share it online, and consider pitching in via Patreon. Your support means everything.